I have done a video tutorial on how to calibrate your BenQ hardware calibrator display with Palette Master Element before. However, that display was done on a Macintosh system, and a lot of my Windows users and my Windows followers are asking if I could do a video on how to use Palette Master Element with Windows. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Palette Master Element on a Windows system with the SW series of display and Palette Master Element to calibrate your display. I'm Art Sang, I'm a BenQ brand ambassador, and let's get right into it. So so for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the device I really like, which is the i1 Display Pro. Like I said, in my testing and in previous videos, I have done a testing with a lot of device, and one of the devices that produce the best calibration result is the i1 Display Pro. So I'm going to be using this device for this video. Now secondly, what we want to do is there are certain settings on a window system that we want to make sure that we go in and proactively turn off so that it doesn't conflict with Palette Master Element as we're doing a calibration. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and go into my desktop. I'm going to right click on the desktop and I'm going to go under display setting. So under display setting, a couple of things I want to make sure that I disable is number one, change brightness automatically when lighting changes. So go ahead and disable that. Even though the BenQ display won't be changed into brightness, let's just kind of turn it off in general to make sure that the setting is good. Secondly, there's a toggle right below that called night light. Go ahead and turn that off. This way your, your screen won't change colors and it won't affect the BenQ display as well. I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom now and click on advanced display setting. Under advanced display setting, I'm going to go into the middle here and I'm going to go ahead and click on display adapter property for display one. Go ahead and click on that and I'm going to get another window that shows up here. So I'm going to click on color management here and once I click on color management, I'm going to get the screen that pops up right next to it. This is the color management control screen essentially. What I'm going to do here is click on the last tab under advanced. Under the advanced tab, we're going to scroll down or go down all the way to almost the bottom and there's a option there that says display calibration. As long as that button is grayed out like mine, use window display calibration, you are good. Generally, if you just format a window or you just open a new window laptop up and if it shows up gray like that, you're fine. However, if you have done a window calibration before, you want to make sure that you go in and disable that first so that the system does not interfere with Palette Master Element. Once we are done with that, we can close all these settings window out. And what I'm going to do now is go into the Start menu and type in Palette Master Element. We're going to go ahead and launch Palette Master Element up. So now I have Palette Master Element launched. Palette Master Element has already acknowledged my i1 Display Pro device because I've plugged this in before, as you can see in the check mark there. Now here's the case, a lot of the users of BenQ SW Series Display run into an issue where every time they launch Palette Master Element, they get an FTDI driver error. If you have received that error, what that really means is that you need to plug in a USB cable between your device and the display. What happens is that the display cable that's carrying the signal between your computer and the display does not have enough bandwidth for the Palette Master Element to talk to the computer inside the display as well. This is why you need an extra USB cable to be plugged in. Now, if you're lucky and you have one of the later BenQ displays, in this case, I have the BenQ SW270C with a USB Type-C connection. It's just one single USB Type-C cable that handles everything, which makes it really awesome. And I'm also plugging in my X-Rite i1 Display Pro here, which have a USB Type-A connector on the side of the display using the hub that is built into the display itself, which is really kind of awesome. Okay, moving on. So in the Palette Master Element, what I want to do, the first thing is I want to make sure that I check on Advanced because I really want to go in and control the settings for my display calibration. I'm going to go ahead and click on start here and there's not a lot that we can do besides just really choose profiling and click on next. Profiling is selected in purple by default by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. In this screen, this is where we would come in and change our setting for the display. D65 value here is good. It's the default value and it is the industry standard that people use. D65 or 6500 Kelvin for display calibration is one of the most widely used Kelvin color temperature for the display. 
Next, in RGB primary, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at Adobe RGB because Adobe RGB is the largest color space in this case and I want to work in a larger color space that the display can support. Because the display, all of BenQ SW series displays that uses Palette Master Element can display 99% Adobe RGB. This is the reason why I want to choose Adobe RGB for this. Next, this is where we would come in and change our display luminance. In general, what I recommend setting your display luminance to is anywhere between 100 to 120 candela. Personally, for me, 160 candela as listed here is way too bright for a display. And the reason why we want to come in and control our candela value is this. is because if we don't go ahead and change this value, when we edit on our screen, the pictures is going to look amazing, the color is going to look great, the brightness is going to look perfect, and then every time you get a picture back from the lab, you're going to find out that the picture is coming back much darker. So what we're trying to do in this case is setting our screen so that we are actually editing at the brightness level that matches the print, number one. And secondly, the benefit of doing that is that when we set the screen at the proper brightness value, we're calibrating the screen at that brightness level. This way we get a much better ICC profile once we're done with the calibration. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set my candela value to 100. Gamma, we're gonna go ahead and leave it at 2.2. Next up is black point. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose absolute zero. If you find out after the calibration, once you have done the validation, that your display is not looking quite good, you can always come back and change it to relative. In this case, we have an LCD panel. An LCD can only produce black that are so black, that means that it can never show true black because it's not an OLED, which is okay. But in this case, I want to choose absolute zero so that the program will try to pick the darkest black point in this case. Okay. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on next. Now in this next screen, this is where we would choose the calibration slot we want our hardware calibration to go through. In this case, I have a newer BenQ SW series of display and all of them are built in with three hardware calibration slots. The older BenQ hardware calibrated display comes with two hardware calibration slots. But because this is a single device I'm using this display with, or at least specifically for this video, I'm going to choose calibration slot 1. Now, if you're curious about how to use these calibration slots creatively, you can go ahead and click at the flag up here. And I have a video that talks about how you can use these calibration slots creatively with either one PC or multiple PC connected to it. Now, next is the ICC profile name. In this case, what I'm going to do is keep the name at the default value because it's telling us a lot of information already. It listed right there the name of the model of the display, the white point that we're using, the color space we're using, the luminance, the gamma, and it also has a date and timestamp on there too. So leaving it what it is, the default works really well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and choose the ICC profile version 4. Now, here's the case. If you are on a Windows system like I am, and once you start calibrating it, and once you're done with the calibration, if there's a problem with the profile, or if the profile is not loaded correctly for some reason, you may want to come and change the profile version here to version 2. The reason why is because Windows 10 have some issues with ICC version 4 and some compatibility issue. So if that is ever your problem, or if you have any doubts at all, go ahead and set to version 2 right away. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and do that to avoid any issues in the future. So now what we're going to do is under profile type, we're going to choose matrix because matrix is going to give us the largest profile possible. And the next one here, this is the patch size. This is a number of patch that we are going to be measuring on the screen. What I'm going to do here is I'm a believer in choosing the largest color patch possible to produce the most accurate color possible. Once we choose our large patch, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and click on Start Measurement. Once we click on Start Measurement, a screen will pop up right below there. And what it's asking me to do right now is it's asking me to go ahead and take the cover off and rotate this device like so, so that the lens is actually exposed. What I'm going to do next is go ahead and click on Continue. And then once I click on Continue, a software placement will show up on the screen. What I need to do here is go ahead and place my X-Ray i1 Display Pro on the position where it kind of tells me there. And I can also adjust this weight counterweight as well to make sure that this stays properly on the screen. Let me rotate the cable a little bit right there. 
Now the next thing that I would recommend that you do as well as uh, don't leave the screen standing vertical like this. What you want to do is make sure that you angle the screen up. This way the X-Rite i1 Display Pro will lie flat and perfectly on the surface because it has a felt lining around the actual X-Rite i1 Display Pro. This will block any light from coming in. So making sure that your screen is tilted a little bit, make sure is that the seal and the contact is 100% closed so that the measurement is much more accurate. Once you're done with that and have this set up, go ahead and click on continue. So the next part of this process is automated. What it's going to do now is that it's going to measure the brightness, adjust the brightness to display at the hardware level, and then it's going to measure all the color. What I'm going to do is speed up this next part and then I'll actually come back and get right back into the video once this is done. So right now Palette Master Element is running and I have actually pulled the Palette Master Element screen to the side here so you can see. As you will see on the background right now, Palette Master Element is measuring every single color that's popping up and is actually reading the value, storing those value inside there. Once this is done, what it's going to do is generate a profile and those are the adjustment that's going to be stored on the display and also as an ICC profile on the computer as well. So we are almost done with the automation part of Palette Master Element. In this case, it's doing the final LUT or final lookup table and brightness adjustment write-up. What it's doing right now essentially is that it's taking all the data that it just measures and writing it to the lookup table inside. This way you will have a true hardware calibrated adjustment done. And then once this is done, we're going to generate an ICC profile. So in this case, an ICC profile on your computer, you may say that well, if the hardware adjustment is done within the panel itself, then why do we need an ICC profile? Well, you still need an ICC profile because what happened is that that ICC profile that's going to be stored on your local device is going to tell the computer, in this case, it's going to tell the graphic card to output full color. Whatever the red, green, blue, whatever those values are and whatever brightness those are, go ahead and output those value fully so that the display itself can use the adjustment that it had learned from Palette Master Element and adjust the color so that it's displaying the proper colors for you. So once BenQ is done with the automation part, you are going to get this screen. This screen is a calibration report. It kind of tells you a lot about what you need to know. It tells you the manufacturer, obviously in this case is BenQ. It tells you the model number of the display, the serial number of the display. It tells you what the profile name is. In this case, it was the profile name that we have saved earlier, or in this case, we just use the default profile name. It tells us the target luminance that we want, in this case is 100, and right below it, it shows us the achieve luminance level. In this case, we we're able to achieve 99.794. I think we're going to be okay with that 0 0.03 away, so I think we'll be good. It also tells us the target color temperature that we want, which is 65K. In this case, we have a sheave 65K, which is really awesome. Now for any good calibration, you may have noticed that I left my i1 Display Pro on the display right now as is. And secondly, I haven't actually done anything further here, but there's a button right below there called Validate Calibration. I highly recommend you do this and I highly recommend that all of you come and do this because this is one of those things that you can make sure that the profile that you're producing is good. So what I'm going to go ahead is click on continue here because I already have the i1 display pro already turned is in its position ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue it's gonna show me this screen again where I have to position the i1 display pro on the display I have it already there so we're good I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue in this case this is gonna be really quick because it's just measuring all the different colors based on the reference value
Once you are done with the validation, you will be presented with this screen. And this screen is going to tell you a couple of things. It's going to tell you what the average Delta E is for this display and what is the maximum Delta E value. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm not going to use the i1 Display Pro anymore. We're going to take it down, close the lens. This way the lens is not exposed to the element and thus won't go into it. I'm going to go ahead and tilt the display back and you can just, you know, go ahead and tilt this back to your working ergonomics that you like. So in this case, Primarily where I'm concerned here is a delta E value. I want a delta E value as low as possible. And anytime we have a display with a delta E value that is below two, it's considered to be a really great display. In my case here, the average delta E, that means a delta E between all the values that is measuring here, I'm able to achieve 0 0.9. This is really good. Anytime you get below a 0 point something, it's always gonna be great. Now, if you want to try to experiment and try to get that number even lower, you can do that as well. Remember in the very beginning that I talk about using the black point between relative and absolute black, you can try to go in and change that value and see if it actually changed the outcome of this. So that would be one way that you can actually try this out. I hope that you find this video on how to calibrate your BenQ SW Series hardware calibrate display with Palette Master Element on a Windows 10 system helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in a comment below. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please also subscribe to my channel and also hit on the notification bell so you will be updated every time I upload a new video. And until next time, art is right. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in a comment below. If you find this video... <laughs> God.